Yeah, I just wanted to uh, to thank the uh, you know the folks, the, the welcoming committee, the great people of Phoenix that that, that met us when we got in. Uh, that was to stay out there for us. Really made it uh, you know really special. And uh, you know, my brother was right. You got incredible people out here uh, um, you know, in this Phoenix area. I know he loves it uh, out here. And then thank Dan. Uh, Dan Gavitt for being out there. He's always been great to me, and uh, and uh, so we appreciated that that welcome yesterday. First question is going to be on the left side, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with the Athletic. Dan, how was your flight? <laughs> it was not. You know what? It, it was nice. Uh, <laughs> you know what? It's like uh, you know, I know, I, you know. Had a lot of thoughts because you know, I've had a lot of time <laughs> uh, to think, uh, just in a stationary uh, situation. But um, you know, it's like I think what goes through your mind once you're done, you know, kind of complaining and cursing and muttering and trying to, you know, you just start saying to yourself, uh, you know, like you don't really deserve to show entitlement. Um, it's such an honor to get a chance to and a once-in-a-lifetime experience to go play in a Final Four, coach in a Final Four, that, um, you know, it's just, um, you know, once kind of that edge wore off, you start, you know, lucky to be here. We're lucky to get an opportunity to come play in the Final Four. Um, and then who doesn't deal with problems with the airlines? <laughs> I mean, people deal with it during the holidays, and it's just uh, it's something that you, you know, just got to get through. But it sucked. Up front and center. Dan Domagori from The Current. Uh, I know you alluded to it, I think, during the week somewhere, but uh, can you give us your take on what you've seen from the women's team, if you've been able to watch them the other night and what they've been able to do with what they've been up against? Yeah, um, just to see it in the building, because you, you walk by the training room and they got, like, a top five team in the country that's hurt and not playing. So, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's why Geno's... You know, one of, the, one of the best coaches of his generation, and obviously the you know, you know, uh, you know, Paige and 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 their crew, they're just uh, it's special, and um, to do it with everything that they've dealt with the last two years, uh, it's just um, you know, it's 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 incredible, I and mean, it just speaks to the level of, uh, of of Gino and his staff and and UConn women's basketball and why they've been the premier program, uh, you know, uh, in the country. Coach, we'll go to the center of the room. Jeff. Dan, you look terrific for somebody that didn't get any sleep. <laughs> terrific. Yeah. Well, I got two on the plane, okay. and then I got another two at the hotel. Well, you look good. Caffeine. Uh, that's why God made caffeine. You know, everybody's talking about your team, and, and this one's a, a layup, right? You're going to beat Alabama, no problem. You've said you, you kind of make up some stuff to motivate your team. What have you made up so far? Uh, to motivate your group so far? Yeah, I don't think you, at, at this point, you know, with what Alabama's shown in terms of what they're capable of to beat a number one seed in North Carolina, um, and just to, with how good their offense is, I mean, it's, um, it, it'll be the best offense that we've guarded, uh, you know, this year. You know, it, 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 as good as Illinois was, this is better, um, just because I think they're, you know, they're, they're, they're deeper. Just more athletics, you know. Just more guards that can break you down. Um, and then look at the, you know, we, we've, you know, we, we've lost three games. I mean, we got, you know, we got crushed uh, at Creighton, and um, you know, at Seton Hall, we got, we got our, we got our butt kicked too. So if we're not on our identity, like we're, we're vulnerable like everybody else. But um, you know, again, if we play elite offense, elite defense, and beat you on the backboard, it, we're, we're tough to beat. Left side, just to the right of the aisle. Hey, Dan. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. In the past, you've said you prefer not to, for instance, play against your brother at Arizona State or former team like URI or guys you know well. Does, does, does Nate fall into that purview? In a perfect world, you wouldn't have to go up against a good friend like that? Or? Yeah, I mean, he definitely fits into the, the category. Um, you know, I, I would say you don't would rather not play Bob or Nate. Um, or anyone that you're close to, maybe in the first round of the tournament, or maybe in an elite eight game. But um, you know, this one, I think uh, I'm excited to you know to compete against a friend in uh, you know in in such a you know big spot. You know, this is like 
the Final Four, uh, I think, kind of changes it a little bit for me because, you know, we've both done something incredible with the season, and then, you know, somebody that I really care about is going to play for a national championship, preferably me. But I, <laughs> I also care about Nate, too, to a much lesser degree. Same area of the room, Chris. Chris Button with ESPN. When you look at the people that have won back to back, Billy Donovan said he reached out to Bill Belichick. Kirby Smart at Georgia did a deep dive into the New Zealand All Blacks. I'm wondering who you've reached out to, who you've studied on how to sustain success. Yeah, Bill. Uh, you know, Billy Donovan. Uh, I got you know talking to him immediately, uh, really a week after the season ended last year, and I kind of. You know, hit that emotional crash when it's over and it doesn't feel like maybe what you thought it would in terms of that sustained uh, euphoria kind of disappeared quickly. So um, you know, we talked a lot about that and uh, just the, the emotions of it all. And then, you know, then the mindset with the team. The difference is I had a whole new team, basically. You know, uh, you know Coach K and Billy Donovan, the last you know, two coaches to do it, you know, they, they returned pretty much intact an entire dominant team. And, um, you know, we've done this while losing five of our first, five of our top seven or whatever it was, scorers, and only taking one in the portal. So doing it through player development and doing it through trusting freshmen and strategic portal. So it was different. Um, and we, I'd say that we did talk about, like, you know, reigning and defending uh, more than I was told to. Um, because I, I, I and actually, what we talked a lot about with Tristan Donovan and, uh, and AK uh, Caravan was like, you guys got a chance to make history at a place that is impossible to make history. And that was probably what we leaned into a lot with that returning core that could have been complacent because, you know, been there, done that. Final four national championships, you know, I did it already. Why do I got to push so hard? Well, you got a chance to make history in a place that is impossible to make history. Back of the room to the right of the aisle. Kyle Tucker with The Athletic. Um, with, Sorry, Kyle. No, you're good. In a, uh, in a Final Four that's got a bunch of really unique big guys, what makes your, your guy special? Yeah, I just think um, you know, his, his impact all over the court, um, because he moves so well and he's got such great mobility, Donovan, and um, you know, he's got the, uh, the motor and the, the feel, he could really pass. So we can move him around offensively in terms of like five out or passing out of the post if he commands a double team. You know, he's devastating in the ball screen game because he puts so much pressure on the rim as a roller, changes the gravity of the court that way. Um, and then obviously, you know, running the, running the court and transition, the threes that he creates in the driving lanes because of his presence is a game changer. And then the defensive end is where he's at his best. Uh, he could get up in ball screen defense and slow a guard's momentum down, but still deal with the roller, which is going to be critical tomorrow. So just when you're 7'2", 260 and move like that, um, you know, that's why he, you know, not bad for honorable mention, all Big East. Back to the room on the left, Fanta. Dan, John Fanta, Fox Sports. Um, you have talked at times about some of your uh, – the things that you do to distract yourself in key moments, such as yoga, you took a painting at one time, mental exercises that are therapeutic. When you were stationary for seven hours, what did you do to, to pass the time last night? Yeah, I mean, I ruminated uh, a lot. Um, I spiraled, and then uh, I had my head in my hands a lot. I know Andrea storied that pose yesterday. Um, you know, because uh, the, the toughest part, we, we got a chance to go home, which was nice, so we sent the guys back to campus because then, it, you know, we were going to leave at 11.30. But then that, that, they, that, it was a real mindful exercise uh, from 11.30 to, like, 1.45 on the tarmac. You know, the, it was therapeutic to watch the de-icing out the window. That was, that was probably the best part of it, John. We'll go up front, Coach. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Public Coach. You That's last year sure. beat people badly in the playoffs. This year you're beating people worse than you did last year. What's enabled you guys to just sustain that level of play and literally not have any close games? Um, just uh, just to, to have a, a special group of players that have that 
that combination of, uh, of, of talent and, um, and humility and a willingness to, uh, to not make it about themselves, a commitment to both ends of the court, doing what's in the best interest of, of, of the team, and then you know, making the, the hustle and the effort plays on the backboard um, you know, that way, preparing the right way, just from a coaching staff standpoint, from a player standpoint, just getting the absolute perfect group of people around you. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've, this tournament's the hardest thing to do. <laughs> I mean, you could see it, uh, the, the programs, the, you know, with the most, you know, best resources, biggest brands have a hard time getting here uh, because of the, the changes in the game recently. So we've made an incredibly hard tournament to advance in, look easy, and uh, probably a lot easier than, than it really is. Pay no attention to what's happening at this time. We're going to go to Matt and then Dan. Matt Norlander, CBS Sports. Uh, as you watch the de-icing solution kind of wash over the plane, I, I do have a genuine question for you, knowing how you were wired, Dan. Um, your players landed at about 6.15 body clock time, East Coast time. Um, what adjustments have you made, if any, to get them? Dan, you paying attention? Yes, I'm okay. listening. <laughs> We're also de-icing. You know what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can wait. No, no, I'm listening. Okay. I got you. I'm following you. Uh, what, what adjustments have you made when it comes to prep? Obviously, they have no media availability here today, but you care a lot about the details and all that, so I'm wondering what adjustments uh, I know you're very keyed into to prep for Saturday night's tip. Yeah, we just we, you know, we, we pushed things back a little bit, maybe like an hour and 15 today. The guys were able to sleep in a little bit. Um, you know, we, we did our, our, our same routine, though. We did our video at the hotel, and... And, and we knew we only had an hour and a half on the court, so it was important to take advantage of shooting and get a little bit of live play so we could just get adjusted to a um, you know, much, much bigger setting. And um, so I think we, you know, we, we obviously took a little bit off the practice plan and um, you know, we'll just make sure that we, we do a little bit less tonight, let these guys get their rest. Um, I mean, listen, these guys were getting in a van, driving 14 hours to the Peach Jam and playing two hours later, so there, there, there's no excuses. I mean, shit, I was driving a mini cheese bus uh, to prep school games not too long ago, so uh, yeah, you know, we, we, <laughs> we're in the final four here, man, with a chance to, uh, you know, to, to advance to repeat as national champions and make history. You know, we're, we're way past that shit. Dan. Yeah, Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Nate was in here earlier and basically said that getting to know the Hurleys and especially your dad sort of made him realized that if he never advanced beyond becoming a high school coach, that that was okay. Um, what was it about him that the Hurleys liked and that you yeah. guys sort of vibed with? Yeah, it's like um, he, he was running uh, a college program in high school. Just like my dad, if you went and watched St. Anthony, just the way the program functioned from the pregame pre meal that that was uh, that my dad was literally cooking on his own uh, to game day shoot arounds to film sessions like the quality of what my dad was doing at the high school level um, was was the quality of what the top programs in college were doing you know obviously based on the resources available right so that was the thing I noticed about Nate when we recruited at EC was like this guy's wired different number one uh, his uh, different level of energy uh, about him just the way he shows up when you meet him, and then just the way he ran his program. I went and watched them uh, before a state tournament game, uh, have one of the most detailed video scouts that you'll see, and in the back they had spaghetti <laughs> cooking on the stove. Uh, you know, it was, you could see he was a, he was a high-level guy that just happened to be coaching in college. Second row center. We're going to use the front left, mic or the front right microphone, excuse me. Second row. Ben Portnoy, Sports Business Journal. Dan, uh, around the time that you got to UConn, there were some pretty well-documented financial issues for the athletic department as a whole. But when you look at the way things have changed over the time that you've been at UConn, whether that's as a basketball program or for the athletic department as a whole, what's that been like to see some of that growth and some of that change to kind of see where you guys are at now? Yeah. Um, I mean, even going back to the 90s, I think when, when, when you'd pull up the campus and see how the university's changed into – you know, just a world-class university with an incredible campus and how stores uh, as a college town has, uh, has really elevated. So, um, yeah, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, when you get 
when you get your program playing back to top of sport um, and you find yourself on these big stages, there's obviously opportunity for the university to take advantage of these things and what we did last year and what we've done this year and the attention that the men's and women get. Uh, yeah, the, the university's got to figure out uh, every way to capitalize. Adam. Dan, Adam Zagoria, NJ.com. Glad you made it here safe. Uh, we got a Big East team in the Final Four here. We got a Big East team in the championship game of the NIT. Um, what does that say about the Big East? And did the did the NCAA tournament screw up by not oh, allowing God, Seton Hall in this tournament? I'm trying to move on, man. It's like you people are trying to. You know, oh man. Hey, listen. Yeah, I mean Shaheen. He's uh, he's just an awesome coach, and the NIT has been a blast. I. I I got a chance to watch a bunch of the games, but that Indiana-Cincinnati game, uh, I watched that one night. That was an incredible game. Some of those NIT games have been awesome. Um, I mean, listen, you, you, you saw our Big East tournament games. You saw a game against St. John's. You saw what Seton Hall did to us in the regular season. You saw the season that Providence had, the high-end wins. Those teams, you know, very well, you know, could have, should have been in the tournament. Um, Obviously, there's things that we got to do as a league better. You got to look in the mirror too. Um, across the board, you know, you, you got to win non-conference games. You got to win big non-conference games, and then you, you know, you can't lose by games like nobody um, can't do stuff like that too. So, uh, as a whole, in the entire league, um, it's got to come through in the non-conference. But obviously, there was more teams deserving. But you know, a lot of teams, you know, you know there were some bids that were stolen, but. Listen, some of our hardest games this year have obviously come in the Big East. So, yeah, you said it. Front row on the left side, Coach. Hey, Coach. Blake Neiman, Sun Devil Source. Um, kind of the full circleness of uh, Bobby here. And uh, he, he said yesterday um, that he'd roll out the red carpet for you guys and you just being welcomed here. Um, can you just kind of talk about the full circleness of him trying to go back to back as a player and then you guys now being back to back Final Fours here and doing it in Bobby's college town? Yeah, it's awesome to, to be out here and, and I see why Bob loves it so much. And, and uh, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, you, um, you know, the, the time I'll spend with him the next couple of days, you know, him sabotaging these other programs for me uh, at his site there is going to be give me a distinct advantage too, which I appreciate from Big Bro. Um, yeah, and, and it's just uh, you can see why he he loves it here. You could see why uh, he values his job here, and and uh, you know, I think when he's in a position, um, you know, to have all, all the resources that a lot of us at this Final Four have, when he has that at his full disposal. You know, he'll be up on this dais, and someday I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be supporting him. Final question for Coach. Let's go over to the front row, UConn Radio. Wayne Norman, UConn Sports Network. Last week, you really sang the praises of Tristan Newton being one of the greatest guards in UConn history. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you think he's playing better this year than he did last year? because he knows the plays better, he knows where the open man's gonna be. Do you feel he's made a big step from last year when he was great to yeah. this year? Yeah, he's made a big step, um, a lot more on his shoulders from a leadership standpoint. I mean, Adama, uh, Andre Jackson's like one of the great leaders all time in sports. Adama, by example, led like few men, you know, could lead that guy. Uh, you know, Hawk was quietly, you know, a, a tough guy with, with Obviously, game-changing abilities. Joey, California, Naheem Aline, they were like older men who were, were great rotation pieces. So, you know, Tristan lost so much of his wingmen and uh, had to assume so much responsibility and, and be, you know, uh, last year he was, a, he was a fourth starter, fifth starter, to now the driving force, you know, behind this team. So, um, it just, you know, it would... With the guys that chose to come back, like Donovan, who could have been a top 20 pick, but came back, and now it looks like that 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 bet on himself and us is going to pay off uh, in terms of where his draft stock is. And and Tristan, this has gone exactly the way you know we told Tristan after the the, the draft combine. The reason, every reason why he should come back to school has absolutely come to fruition. Um, and you just love when it works out that way. Uh, it makes obviously it. it, it, it it's that bond between you greater. Um, it's going to help in recruiting. Uh, and then, you know, he, uh, you know, he is. His career as a guard at UConn 
Again, I don't know what happens from here with him. I think he's got a great chance to play in the NBA for a while. But just a, you know, guards having worn the uniform with what he's done in terms of winning and accolades, you know, it, it's tough to beat his two years of accomplishments.